Hey folks, welcome back to HBD Custom Woodworking. My sincerest apologies to all of you. It seems like it's been forever since my last video. There's been a ton of stuff going on here at the ranch. We've expanded the shop so that we no longer have to farm out the metalwork that goes into some of our projects. We can now do all that light machining right here in-house. Anyway guys, welcome back to the general store. I'm going to make this video as informative as I possibly can. Unfortunately, this little project was already complete before I even realized it was a thing. A buddy of mine said, hey, there's a lot of guys that really struggle with this. You should post this. So, here goes. Let me introduce you to Porky. Porky's a round column mill similar to what a lot of guys have in their shops. Because as a hobbyist, I don't have 40 or 50k for a knee mill or an old bridge port. Porky is a 36 inch king round column bench top on steroids. Among the upgrades that we've made are a PSC power feed on the X axis. I added a KM swivel head one piece mill vise, which honestly was just the best I could afford. Because let's be frank, you could spend as much on a vise as you do on a mill. But this one works good and it's accurate. And last but not least, an offshore DRO, which irregardless of the brand are all pretty reliable. As long as you get something out of the Shenzhen region, they all seem to stand up and work pretty well. This is where the struggles begin. The X and Y axis installation for a digital readout on virtually any style mill is relatively simple. The Z axis, which is the up and down of the quill, is another matter altogether on a round column mill. A lot of guys have a real problem with this. So what they end up doing is going with a two axis DRO and adding a beam style or a sliding scale style DRO for their Z axis. But even that, I've seen a lot of guys really struggle with this. I've seen some real messes trying to get these things mounted. Now from what I've seen, 99% of all round column mills are all manufactured the same. They all have this collar at the base of the spindle that travels up and down with your Z-axis. Now here's where this will get a little tricky, because as I said, mine's been removed already. But the whole purpose of that collar is it supports a rod that travels up and down with the movement of the Z-axis behind the faceplate. It's got a little marker on it that reads on an inch scale on the front of that cover. If you're like me, machining is not done in inches, it's done in thousandths of an inch. So that scale is completely inadequate right from the get-go. That little collar, however, is the solution to all of our problems. I've seen some of the strangest and ugliest configurations guys have come up with to find a way to get these things mounted. The solution is staring us right in the face. It's as simple as about a two inch long chunk of two inch angle aluminum. You begin by removing your faceplate, the front plastic cover, and take that rod out that used to measure on the inch scale. The next step is to drill a 3 8 hole in one flat of that little aluminum bracket. Use a carriage bolt to go up through the hole that used to support that rod. That'll secure the bracket to the collar. What makes this even simpler is that that rod used to sit in a collar that supported your quill stop. The over dimension of that hole makes it such that we can move that bracket in and out so the back of the reader on the beam sits flush with the faceplate, which is already perpendicular to the z-axis of the mill. Now all you do is simply attach the back of your reader to the front of the front cover with some 3M double-sided batch tape. That stuff is strong as steel. The only additional modification you may have to make is you might have to open up the front of the top cover where the beam meets it. That allows the beam to travel up and down inside the cover when you move your z-axis up and down. The last step is to route the seven miles of wire they give you on these things to the back and secure it. 
Installation done. This is so far the cleanest and simplest install I've seen of a beam style scale on a round column mill. Now let's be honest, a third axis on your DRO would be preferable, but if you do end up going with a beam style scale, here's a really simple and easy way to do it. It's accurate, it works well, and the scale rides perfectly. Anyway guys, thanks for your time. Here's a little look at some of the projects that have been coming out of the shop since we spoke last. Hope you enjoy them.